Thanks for joining me today. My name is Jeff Fox. I'm a senior product marketing manager for Embarcadero's developer tools. Today I have the privilege of telling you about the RAD Solution Pack. Let's start with what that means. It's the ultimate collection of VCL and FMX tools and components for Delphi and C++ Builder to enhance your applications and boost your productivity. The RAD Solution Pack delivers charting, reporting, grids, UI controls, debugging, analytics and IoT components and tools into a single high-powered and cost-effective solution. It's an incredible value of over $6,000 worth of components and tools. This presentation today will showcase the components included in the RAD Solution Pack through mixed media. The video content are excerpts. To see the full demos, visit the Embarcadero website. Let's get started. T-Chart Pro version 2015 for VCL and FMX is a rich charting component library offering hundreds of graph styles in 2D and 3D for data visualization in the form of maps, charts, and gauges. It includes 56 mathematical, statistic, and financial functions for you to choose from. Together with an unlimited number of axes, 30 palette components, and numerous interactivity enhancement tools. It renders in GDI, GDI+, OpenGL, and DirectX, and it includes 100% of its own source code. T-Chart exports to most widely used static image formats, plus interactive SVG and JavaScript HTML5, as well as a variety of tabular data formats. Its native FMX support means that common source code can be used to deliver charting applications directly to the Windows and Mac desktop, plus iOS and Android devices. Hello, my name is Mark Moyman of, of Steamer Software. Uh, I'm going to show you a little of the, the new data import features of, uh, uh, included with the latest version of T-Chart Pro. And uh, along with David Bernetta, perhaps we can answer any, any questions that you might have about it afterwards. Um, working here in uh, Red Studio XC7 and uh, opened an empty form. And um, I'm putting a, a T-Chart uh, T-Commander component on the form. And we'll place uh, a chart into the center of that form. And I'll just bring it out to, to fill it. Uh, we'll open the teacher editor, double click on the form, on the on the chart, sorry, and uh, we can go to themes and I'll set up a couple of visual features, uh, picking a, a theme called facts, uh, a palette, and uh, applying 2D to the chart. We apply it and that, that look will um, will lend itself to, to the chart that we build. Um, okay, so we're here to show you the, the import feature, uh, which is the, the tab, tab selected at the, uh, the left uh, bottom of the of the option list and you'll see that we can import a file or a URL so we'll go with URL uh, we chose um, a data source for for this demo from from Quandle there's some nice uh, there's some nice data samples on on there to show some nice charts and this is major US air carriers on time performance so we'll paste that URL in the, the the link to the CSV file, and we'll import that to the the editor, and that shows us a preview of the data, which we can now import to the chart. Um, that's created a chart with uh, you'll see six series types related to flight information, and uh, two axes on the left and the right. Uh, it's divided the the data into two axes because. Uh, it's taken a best guess based on the type of information in the chart. Some of the series t t information will have been insignificant with re relation to the rest of it, and for it to, having mean uh, to have meaning on the chart, it's created a, an axis um, for its own space. Um, I can speak a little bit more about axes later, and um, we'll add a title to the chart as no title came with it. You'll notice that uh, T-Chart will pick up on text uh, that are included with the data and will offer options on it. It's the left axis, for example, is called uh, on-time arrivals. So we'll add, the, um, uh, we'll add the title text and I'll just uh, 
uh, change a couple of uh, features of it, the size to make it more readable and I'll move it over to the to the right of the chart. Okay, well we can run this and you'll see that it creates um, a chart um, as we saw in design time. Fast Report VCL is an add-on component that allows your application to generate reports quickly and efficiently. Fast Report provides all the tools necessary for developing reports, including a visual report designer, a reporting core, and a preview window. Report Generator, Fast Report VCL, is a modern solution for integrating business intelligence in your software. It has been created for developers who want to use ready-made components for reporting. Fast Report VCL, with its simplicity of use, convenience, and small distribution size, is able to provide high functionality and performance on almost any modern PC. Fast Report FMX2 is a multi-platform report generator for Apple Mac OS X and Microsoft Windows, compatible with Embarcadero Rad Studio FMX Library, FireMonkey FM3. Report Generator Fast Report FMX is the first multi-platform solution for integrating business intelligence into software based on Embarcadero's FireMonkey IDE, Delphi for Microsoft Windows, and Apple Mac OS X. We're going to standard report result. We have our data set. All we need to do is select fields we want to print. I don't want any groups, but if you need a report with groups, you can add it. But I don't don't want to use it right now. So that's basically all. We can select report style, and that's all we need to do to create a simple list report but also you can create a report manually for this we need to connect our data to report and the fastest way to create a simple list report and by holding control key we just select fields we want to print and just drag and drop it so as we can see it creates a band with memos. It's already connected to data. So as you can see it's very easy to make a report. FastCube FMX and FastCube VCL2. FastCube enables you to analyze data and to build summary tables, data slices, as well as create a variety of reports and graphs both easily and instantly. It's a handy tool for the efficient analysis of data arrays. Depending on your needs of operating system and IDE support, choose between FastCube VCL2 and FastCube FMX. Now we can have a quick look at how to build a application with FastCube. First of all, I want to add a connection to database. I want to use a table, put connection to my demo database. In this example I want to use country table. So now we move now we can move to FastCube components. We can find it in component palette on FastCube 2 section. To build a cube application we need a TFCX cube component. We need TFCX slice also to manipulate with slices I want to use toolbar and to view our slices I need uh, TFC slice grid I set it to a link to client now we need to connect a table for this we need a TFC DB dataset and data source component. First of all, we connect our DB dataset component to 
ADO table. Now we need to connect data source to DB dataset. And now we connect our data source to cube component. One important thing about that is we need to select source method of data input. We need to select data source as we use one. Now we need to connect our cube to slice component and to connect our toolbar to slice grid and finally we need to connect our slice grid to slice component. So it's basically all we need to do. Now I want to activate our cube in on form on create event. All I need to do is set active property to true. That's basically all we need to do now. We can run our application and create our first cube. To build our first cube, we need to open our field list. And as row, I want to use a name of the country. Now we need to create a measure field. I want to use population for this. We need to drop it here. Now we have our measure fields and we can move it to column. So now we can see a fast result, fast calculation based on database data. Wall to wall info power grids. Info power grids includes the critical and necessary grid user interface components for building professional desktop applications using Rad Studio's VCL library. Central to InfoPower are two greatly enhanced data-aware grids, the traditional vertical grid, as well as the hierarchical horizontal grid. InfoPower's award-winning traditional grid greatly expands upon the capabilities of Delphi's native grid component with a rich set of embeddable controls and integrated sorting, filtering, lookups, and so much more. The versatile horizontal grid gives an alternative, flexible presentation with expandable and collapsible fields. Wall-to-wall -wall firepower grids. Firepower grids includes the critical and necessary grid user interface components for building professional desktop and mobile applications using Rad Studio's FireMonkey library. Similar in capabilities to the award-winning InfoPower VCL library, firepower grid components integrate seamlessly with your existing data and are truly data-aware grids. Central to Firepower are two greatly enhanced data-aware grids, the traditional vertical grid and the more versatile layout grid, which are complemented with a rich library of other embeddable components. The grids are designed to be expressive, flexible, and powerful for the programmer, and incredibly fast, efficient, and intuitive for the end user on both the desktop and mobile devices. So. The first thing we do is let's go back out of here and we'll see that now we have the columns in the order we want. Let's go make the first column a button. So by to do that, we go back in here and we click on the button column and we go to the control information. Right now the control type is a default, it doesn't know it's a button. So we're going to click on that and we're going to select button. Now it's a button. Of course we didn't give it a title or anything, so now we have to give the button some attributes. To do that we go into the control attributes property and we click on the button. Now we want to have a set of captions, so let's give it a caption like uh, edit. And now it'll show edit. And now we may, we may not want the edit to be available for every single column. Maybe it's only going to be editable if the buyer column has a value of yes. So let's go to the events of the grid. So we'll click on the grid and we'll go to the events of the grid and now we're going to determine whether the button should be shown or not. And there is an event called on update column control. And this will let us determine if, if the column should show the button or not. So I've already defined this event before. We're just going to attach it and show you what the code is. So in this event, we have um, a data structure called update control attributes. And in that data structure, there is a can show. Boolean, and if we set that to false, 
then it will not show that custom control. So in this case, I'm going to evaluate the column's field name. If it's the button column, which is the first column, then we'll only show this button if the buyer column has a value of yes. So you can see this says up to control attributes dot can show equals up to control attributes dot get value of buyer asterisk equals yes. So by having that, let's see how that operates right now. So far, we've gotten the button column. We're going to run this program. And now we can see this button only shows up when the buyer column is yes. Okay, that's the first column. Now let's go ahead and continue that. And let's make the second column a checkbox. So we're going to go back into the designer. We're going to click the buyer column. And we're going to make that column a checkbox. So I'm back to cust sorry, control type. Let's make it a checkbox. And now we're going to say the checkbox is true. So we have to go to the checkbox here. And you define the attributes for checkbox. And when it's yes, we'll say that's um, the value that's when it's checked. And what no is the value when it's unchecked. So now when I have that, I run the program again. And we'll look at the buyer column this time. And the buyer column now shows a check whenever the buyer value was yes. Kanopka Signature VCL Controls, the premier VCL UI control suite for Windows. Kanopka Signature VCL Controls is a user interface design system for RAD Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder. At its center is a collection of more than 125 general purpose native VCL controls. These high quality components give developers unsurpassed power and flexibility without sacrificing ease of use. In addition to the core offerings, Kanopka Signature VCL controls include more than 100 component designers focused on simplifying user interface development. Kanopka Signature VCL controls give developers a big boost to productivity when building sophisticated user interfaces in less time with less effort. Kanopka Signature VCL controls come with complete source code for all components, packages, and design editors. One way to showcase some of the capabilities of the different components is to run the demo program that comes with uh, the race components and signature controls here. Uh, what this allows us to do is see uh, a variety of different capabilities all in a nice condensed uh, demonstration program. And one of the examples that this is highlighting is the custom framing support. Um, one of the neat things is, is that Windows 10 actually has a style that's very similar to the built-in custom framing style that was uh, added into uh, the signature controls. Uh, for example, it has flat border styles and so forth. Um, all of the controls do support custom uh, VCL styles as well. We'll have an example of that a little bit later on. Uh, but custom framing is quite powerful because not only does it give us control over um, what the bordering looks like, but we can even remove some of the borders. And let's say we wanted to make a set of controls that look more like line styles, and we can set up uh, to make trans, you know, the borders disappear. We just have underscores under each item, and, and it highlights as we move the mouse around the different controls. We can even have hot tracking and focus color changes. So if I make this, say, a light turquoise, I bring back the different styles. Let's do a hot track, but really make it an aqua color. And as I move around, I can see that this will highlight each of the different controls. There's no coding that's needed for any of this. This is all just managed by property changes that are in the controls. The tabs example is another one that's extremely powerful uh, control. Uh, it's all native. Um, it's not descending from the Windows Common Control, so it gives us a lot more capability to display uh, different tab styles. So we have a default uh, single slant. You can have a back slant, double slant, cut corner, which is nice, um, rounded corner, which is kind of the old traditional style, and even the newer style with the squared corners. Um, 
as we go and make these changes we can show images on each of the tabs uh, even support tab dragging which is very nice disabled tabs cannot select it or move it but we know that it's there being able to have a drop down menu show up all of your tabs that are available this is great if you have lots of, of different pages um, you can even support colored pages so having a separate color for each page as you need uh, very simple to do all of these are driven by various properties and changes uh, we can put the the tabs on the or the images on the th different uh, sides of the text. We can have uh, close buttons on each tab. We can have one next to the scroller itself. We can even put um, the orientation, put them on the left. Notice how it will rotate the tabs to be appropriate. We could certainly change them to be um, horizontal. So whatever style and organization you want your tabs to have you can easily find and there's a number of different ways to uh, colorize things control the overlap and so forth very easy to use CodeSide Studio 5 live local and remote application logging gain deeper insight into code execution with a live viewer logging system that helps locate problems quickly while code is executing locally or remotely Go beyond traditional breakpoint debugging to log application execution while the app continues to run, feed data from multiple apps into a single log, and visually analyze data in real time. CodeSide Studio 5 supports the latest development frameworks and integrated development environments, including Embarcadero's Rad Studio 10 Seattle and Visual Studio. CodeSide Studio 5 introduces a redesigned message transport format a flexible new log file format, and even more ways of logging important information from your application. For example, CS5 includes new trace method functionality, profiling timers, PNG image support, and much more. In addition, code site messages can now be transported and saved in a log file in compressed format, which reduces the file size of the message on disk and also obfuscates the message data in the log file. So whether you are developing native 32-bit applications using Delphi or C++ Builder, native 64-bit applications in Delphi, XE2 or later, or managed apps based on the Microsoft.NET framework, CodeSight will handle your logging needs. Next example that I want to show illustrates um, one an, an, another piece of the puzzle and that is the ability for uh, managing multiple threads and how we can get some really uh, good information from that so let me go ahead and dig into here I have a new application uh, this is actually the thread demo oh, I believe I already have it running here we go let me reset this and this is uh, the old DCL demo that came with uh, Delphi and C++ Builder about threads and managing multiple threads for sorting. And what I've done is I've added in code site statements and new categories for each of the different sorting capabilities and I'm going to um, record those into my viewer and we're going to see just what this looks like when we do that. So let me go ahead and run that. We can see that the sorts happened and it's finished and I can move this all around even though my viewer is still capturing data. I can turn that off if I don't need to get the live updates of everything. And one of the benefits, even though it's still working, um, is my application's done. And that is because when we are logging, the logging and the writing to the file or sending to the viewer is actually done by the process called the code site dispatcher and that's a process that runs in the background whether or not the icon is available in the system tray is configurable uh, by default it's not it's only accessible if you're on a developer machine or you've turned it on um, and what it allows you to do is you can have multiple applications all generating your code site messages they all get out of the process of your application so they're not affecting the uh, 
your application doesn't get affected by the writing of the log file, the management of the parts, all of that's handled by the dispatcher. Even sending remotely is all done by the dispatcher. So what's really cool is now if we go to our logger here, I do like looking at this uh, in the live viewer because we can get a sense for how the processor has actually started to work with this. Um, I'm looking at just all the messages and let me bring up the thread because that might be easier. I don't really need the category or the date time at this point. But I can see that it's just cycling through each of the different threads that are being used. And it's not until we get a little bit later on that we start now switching between just the two of them, the selection sort and the bubble sort. And then eventually we scroll down some more and we get just the bubble sort because of course that's the least efficient of the whole bunch. And that's why it was the last one to fill. Um, but this isn't very useful. Uh, would be much more useful is to see, well, how many swaps were each of the different sorts? One quick way to do that is to organize your messages. So we open up the organize message dialog. We go ahead and let's create a new view based on each thread that's in the list. So we see that um, new threads were uh, new views were created for each thread in the list. So of course we have the all messages, but we have the bubble sort, the selection sort, and the quick sort. And each, when we select an active view, we get the number of messages, number of items in the list for each view. So 3200 out of the 4400 were all related to the bubble sort. And what's really nice is I can select the the enter method for the bubble sort and the exit method and the time difference took about five seconds for it to do that sort between the two. If I go to the selection sort I can see that there's only about a thousand items that uh, swaps that took place. I can again select the two items and see that it took about two seconds to do that type of work. Going to the quick sort should be a lot best. That's down to 219 number of swaps. And what did we get down for our timing there? It was a half a second. And so there's some real value that we can get by capturing data, just a few items, run it, react, and analyze what we're seeing inside of our logs. Radiant Shapes a brand new component library that will brighten any FireMonkey app. The library contains 35 reusable shape controls that can be used in all facets of FMX UI development, from style composition and button adornment to data visualization and dashboard design. Each control has been designed for optimal performance and flexibility with an attention to detail that is the hallmark of our software products. Radiant Shapes is a core library every FMX developer needs in their toolbox. If we now move to the media player, media player is an interesting example. Uh, we leverage the media player component that's built into FMX, but we also wanted the ability to kind of stylize the interface a little bit. So we leverage a style book to give us the black background and, and the, the, the standard panel colors, but we didn't want to use standard buttons. We wanted to use the shapes themselves. And so what this application does is all of the elements that you can click on and manipulate are all shape controls. And many of them are composites. So this is two chevrons for the fast forward and the rewind. We've got the sector ring for changing the volume setting. We have the same, for, we have a marker that's used for the progress in the track bar. Um, so these are actually, we've Im modified the style for the track bar to use a radiant shape as the indicator. So wherever, because these are just, these are regular FMX shape controls, wherever you can use them uh, normally for all your embedded styles and other techniques, you can re use radiant shapes instead. Uh, this one is using just a rectangle and a triangle, ring and another rectangle and so forth. Here we're using an arrow and a rectangle to give us. But this isn't the whole reason why we wanted to do it. It's not just the compositing. It's the runtime behavior that we wanted to change. So let's go ahead and run this application and see what we get. So as you can see, when we run the application, we've colored each of the different shapes 
uh, this blue color with uh, a glow effect as we move the mouse over it, including the trackbar thumbs uh, that are using the shapes as well. And of course, I can go in and click the open button, select a little video, and we can go ahead and play this, and it will play it. We can control the volume as necessary. We can pause it, change to a new position, start the playback up, and it will adjust appropriately. Uh, what's also really nice, the reason why I used shape controls here and not just regular images, is that I wanted to be able to change them. So I've set up a couple pre-canned ones, like I can make it a green color, click OK, and all of my theming and coloring has changed to the green coloring, including the glow effects as well. But even more than that, I can even customize that. Because these are just shapes, you have complete control over what you want that to do. So if I wanted to, say, make an orange style, I can simply change the orange color in the highlight and uh, accept that. And now I've changed and modified the, the different settings that I have. So nice little utility uh, capabilities for um, the, using the radio. App Analytics. Understand your users wherever they are with App Analytics. Embarcadero's App Analytics is the first analytics service for mobile, desktop, and wearables. Understand your end users wherever they are to deliver better apps and experiences. Track and measure how often apps are used, which platforms they are running, what features customers are using, find and log crashes, and much more. Understand user behavior by capturing anonymous usage stats from end users. App Analytics is an analytics and tracking service hosted by Embarcadero Technologies and is available for RAD Studio, C++ Builder, Delphi, and Visual Studio. Understand users today in existing Windows VCL apps, FireMonkey, mobile, and desktop apps to deliver better solutions. RAD Solution Pack for VCL or FMX gives you 75,000 events per month. The complete pack, VCL and FMX, gives you 150,000 events per month. Under the covers, the data for the analytics being captured has been sent over the internet to our server that runs as software as a service and you can log in and see the analytics. So the way you do that, we'll go to our browser, is just go to appanalytics.embarcado.com and log in. I can put in my EDN email address and then my password and log in. I can choose Remember Me. And I've got several different applications. I've got an account that's a higher level of account. Uh, at the lowest level, Pluto, you get one application key that it can be active. And then we'll generate, or that application for you will generate uh, a number of analytics. You'll be able to see the first uh, 10,000 of those. It'll keep capturing them. And then you can upgrade to higher levels. So here I want to see the analytics for the VCL test. And so it says, oh, I had one start with one user. I had one crash. It tells me the operating system version. I'm running 6.2. Uh, the version info that I have in my project options tells me it's version 1.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Uh, I can go in and see the details of the crash that was happening. And then it'll tell me it was an access violation uh, at an address, you know, read of address. It affected one user and one session. So we can look at the application flow. So this just said that form one was activated and then I popped up the form a few times. So it just gives you information so you can see what's happening in the flow. The outside circle is the various forms in your app and then the larger block indicates that the form that was used more often. We can also look at controls that are used. So form two, control focused exit, uh, launching of the form two and so on. And we can, if we had any custom events, we'd see those here. You can also go to advanced analysis where you can see, for example, OS version, that's 6.2, maybe the app version, hit go. The user counts, this was app version 1.0.0, user count of one. And the same thing, go back to the dashboard here for my application and for my FireMonkey example. Again, I had uh, a crash. I was running on Windows 10. It was version 1.0 of my application. In advanced analysis, you can also download a CSV file of your analytics, and then you could import those into a database and do some more analysis over time. So here it just gives me, for example, for that choice, which was the OS version that I was running and the user count of one, I could choose some other 
options like the crashes, for example. What was the error message so far? Access violation. Beacon Fence. Beacon Fence is a developer proximity solution that delivers precise GPS-free indoor and outdoor user location tracking and events with radial and geometric zones for any physical location and layout. Visually draw the layout of a physical location and place beacons to track location information down to inches. Create radial and rectangular zones and track intersections, enters, and exits with callback events. Beacon Fence enables developers to take proximity beacons to the next level by adding precision spatial location awareness to their applications both indoors and outdoors. The Beacon Fence component has many different properties and events you can set up, such as the On Zone Enter event to trigger an event in the user client's application as he enters a predefined zone. It also includes the Beacon Fencing Map Editor. You can easily create a new map using the GUI editor and load an existing bitmap, such as an office floor plan, to use as your beacon fencing map. With Beacon Fence, you can set up several maps for different areas in your factory, for example, or floors in your building. The RAD Solution Pack for VCL or FireMonkey gives you 2,500 square feet or 250 square meters. The Complete Pack, VCL and FMX, gives you 5,000 square feet or 500 square meters. And here's an example that ships with Beacon Fence. It's another example that uses a map. In this case, it's a map of our offices in Spain. We're going to add the map to our project and then bring up the map editor and show that map. And some zones are defined plus locations of beacons like we saw in the map editor example. We've got some key value pairs set up for different nodes in the map for people's offices as well as for uh, some of the cubicles that are there. You can look at the different beacon values, make sure those are okay. Uh, if you make any changes, you can save those changes or, or forget about them. So we can choose platform iOS, Android, or OS 10. Here we'll target a Nexus 9. And then it will install the APK file to the Nexus 9. And now we've got the application running. Uh, the black dot will show us where the current smartphone is. Uh, there's The application has some options in the toolbar for turning on and off the position information, the paths, the zones, and so on. So you can play around with those uh, once you have the beacon fence installed and you get some beacons and put them in your own locations. There's options in the sample for hooking into the calculations for proximity using the particle filter al algorithm. Also you can get a display of the beacon information, the list of beacons, uh, the current positions, the major minor, the distance, proximity, and so on. You can search for the different points of interest and then bring up information about those points of interest, displaying the key value pair data for each of those. And then as the smartphone moves around, you'll see the different zones firing, the little black dot, and the beacons that are found uh, by the application in a proximity. And again, here we can look and see as the person enters the zone, the zone gets highlighted with a different color and you can get information about what's nearby. I hope you have found the RAD Solution Pack to be a compelling addition to your development tools. For more information, visit the Embarcadero website or follow our blogs on the RAD Solution Pack. Thank you. I'd like to just quickly mention uh, really that right now, if you were to go to the blog post that was shown on the slides, I haven't had a chance yet to put that together. I'm going to be doing that right after this session wraps up. And also, I would like to point out that the official blog post for all of Code Rage is embt.co forward slash crx dash blog. And I'm going to be updating that as well with information on the RAD Solution Pack and pretty much every uh, C++ and Object Pascal presentation throughout Code Rage X. Again, that link is embt.co 
forward slash CRX dash blog. And that's all lowercase as well. Thanks. And the, uh, and the link is there on the screen as well to the product page for the, for the Red Solution Pack, which has uh, FAQ. If you scroll down further, it has text at the top, and it has what's, in each, what's delivered with each product if you scroll down and uh, and also there's a nice chart that shows up on that product page uh, for what parts are in the VCL version, the FMX version, or the combined VCL and FMX version, right Jeff? Yeah, that's absolutely correct, David. And then there's a link at the bottom to contact sales. Absolutely. And while we're at it, to remind everybody there's the RAD offer that's good till the end of this month uh, if you upgrade to C++ 10 Seattle, Rad Studio 10 Seattle, um, and there's a buy one get one free. There was also one uh, last quarter, but it's there, and you can choose, for example, the Kanopka VCL controls. Yep. Or and, go ahead. And uh, Code Side Studio 5, those are uh, the, the top choices. There's also other options. Um, we also added another promotion that uh, just came effective, uh, and that is uh, for this pack, actually the Rad Solution Pack. Um, if you uh, purchase um, update subscription, or if you already have update subscription for your C++ Builder, Delphi, or Rad Studio, uh, you get 10% off uh, any of the Rad uh, Solution Packs. So that can be a, a nice savings. Okay, and I'll put the RAD offer. The, just go to Embarcadero.com slash RAD offer. I put that in the chat window, and you can look at all the offers that are available to the end of October and all of that information, uh, what's in the bonus packs and so on about the BOGO uh, and such. If you already have 10 Seattle, then go to your registry user download page, and you'll find premium styles and, and meet a converter and so on. So it's great to uh, just go and... Uh, and grab the bits that you have. Certain products like Kanopka VCL controls, for example, that's a separate purchase. That's not part of Red Studio. It has its own upgrade subscription, uh, each of these uh, code site studio and so on. But uh, you can check out all that information on both the, the Red Solution Pack. It's a great deal. You get all those, you know, the, those versions of those components uh, and, and services versus the for example, we have Codesat Express, Fire, uh, Fast Report, Embarcadero Edition, T-Chart, Embarcadero Edition, but the Red Studio Solution Pack has the real full products, and those are listed right with the features that come with each one for the versions that we support. Right, Jeff? Yeah, and with the uh, Red Solution Pack, there's an extra uh, added uh, element here, is uh, when you buy it, it comes with uh, a year of update subscription for every single one of the products. So that's you know, baked into the product. You, you get that for the first year, which means um, if new upgrades come out, if we release another version of uh, Rad Studio, you're going to have the latest version of all of these components, which is uh, a really valuable piece. You don't have to worry about the upgrade uh, problems or, or being on a, on a previous version. You'll have the latest one. Okay, anything else to add, Jeff or Brian, before we take a quick break? Because I've been sitting here a long time and then move on to the, the last three sessions of the day. Uh, the only thing that I would recommend is, yeah, definitely check out the website. Uh, there's uh, detail on each one of these products. And then uh, if you need even more information, we have uh, pages devoted to uh, the Kanopka Signature VCL Controls. We have a page devoted to uh, CodeSite Studio 5, uh, App Analytics, Beacon Fence. You can get deeper dives on, on all of them. 